How's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. It's pretty hot in here. It's like 100 degrees and then um, I'm like, the air condition is live there and still I'm sweating. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> awesome. Nope, that's pretty much how it is here. Minus the 100 degrees. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, 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 so I forgot to mention plus the pollution. So. so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we don't, we don't have that out here right now. So we're good there. That's the speciality living in here, but but no, it, it's okay. It's better. It's better than before. But how are you keeping up? Like, uh, what's going on? Oh my gosh, it's it's been crazy. We've had um with with Twig and Olive, so it's myself, and it's a uh, Doug and Courtney, and um we've all of our all of our travel has um stopped so we actually had to cancel we just uh made the hard decision a few days ago we had a big uh trip over to europe that was scheduled and we had uh, workshops in norway and the czech republic sure. and we just had to with the travel restrictions and the the bans on stuff we just had to we we just couldn't do it and so we canceled um that whole trip or not canceled but just postponed for next year sure. so we have everything set for next year but it's, it's the same it's the same for me i was about to travel to uh, los angeles in the month of uh, june for to cover okay. a wedding and then uh, so i live in europe so i was about to fly to europe in march but i have to cancel all my plans and i have, I have no idea what's going to happen but again at the end i'm making sure that i know that uh, if I stay healthy, if I stay fine and keep doing the yeah. activities online, like sessions like these, then it's just beautiful. Yes. 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 So, so we've been, um, we've been hanging out here. It's been, um, this, this, uh, this past month, they've actually lifted some of the shooting restrictions. Yeah. So we can shoot outside, um, just maintaining social distance. Um, but we can't do anything in a studio yet. So, um, which which is okay for us because so much of our work is outside already, sure. but it just we have this beautiful new studio that we went um, that we recently got into this old historical building, and so yeah. it's kind of sad that we can't use it yet. <laughs> that's, that's good. I know it's it's sometimes you just feel like just going out and just making sure that everything comes back to normal. But I mean, I'm your. I mean, what are you doing with all the courses and all? We've been, uh, when we, the whole team was doing a proper research on your work and uh, everything. We were so happy. We were so glad to know that how at the end you're contributing and you're giving back by, by organizing oh, sessions absolutely. and having uh, discounts going on because we all understand that how important this is at, right now. It is. And it, it was something that was kind of, um, you know, we kind of went back and forth because we didn't want to seem like we were trying to, to capitalize on on the situation in the pandemic that was going on, but more or less, it was just, we really want to give people the opportunity because they have all this time to, sure. you know, sit and, you know, continue your education and to maybe work on those business things that you wouldn't have had time to do before. Yeah. I know that that's how um, we are. I'm always trying to better myself as a person and a photographer. And so if I can get a, a course for, you know, um, really discounted. I'm happy. That makes me happy. So that's kind of where we, we came from, from that. So we've just kind of been doing longer sales and just, um, you know, trying to do some things that um, just even like setting up some different Zoom meetings and just kind of for other photographers just to get in touch and just to set some, a few things like that up. So that's kind of in the works right now. So that's great. Um, that's, great. that's brilliant. I mean, we, even we were planning to come up with like another session where we were planning to do, like donate 75% of the revenue and plus the price we're going to charge. Uh, we have not yet decided the price, but we start trying to make sure that we charge really less for the program for just for the wedding yeah. photographers and 75% yeah. uh, of the money should be uh, donated. Like, yeah. There's no question about that. Like just directly yeah. to one of the organizations who have been making an impact. And that's where we are trying to keep on coming with different ideas, different sessions and people contacting people where we can gather everyone and, and see if they if we come up with on a similar note. But but definitely yeah. we're gonna discuss about the safe. Um but welcome on the outgoing introvert edition three, uh Bobby. We are so happy to have you. And you've already you. given a small introduction. I've already given a small introduction in the video when I, when I went uh, online before. But I would love to hear from you about uh, you, Courtney, Dog, 
like everyone in the team please please if you can uh, take the stage and tell us about you and your company yeah absolutely we our company is actually we're, we're only a five year old company um we had um we're, we're the merging of two businesses so doug and courtney had their own photography studio and then myself i had i had mine and we had we just kind of started uh we, we were two photographers in the same town and we just started working together more and just kind of becoming friends in the in the past i mean eight nine years and what had happened is that we always kind of joked around and said oh we should just merge our businesses we should we should do this we wouldn't have the overhead of paying two studio yeah. spaces and we'd save all this money with you know only have to paying one accountant and and uh, we just kind of joked around about it for the longest time. And then finally, we, we were just like, no, we, we really should do this. There, there's really something here. And one thing that's really neat about Doug and Courtney and myself is that we have three very different, well, one personalities, but we have three very different um, skill sets. And so um, the the things that are my strengths as a photographer and a business owner um, yeah. are Doug and Courtney's weaknesses and and vice versa. I mean, Courtney is a is a master editor. She does all of our editing, no matter if I shoot the session or Doug shoots a session. Courtney does all of our editing, That's and so I, I, I'm awful at editing. So um, <laughs> so just to be able to have that, but. So it's really neat how we all just kind of fit together. Um, but that's how our business works is that we really, we, we have three very different um, skill sets. And um, the, the other thing is that we have, um, even though we're very different in what we yeah. bring to the table, yeah. uh, the, the other thing that um, that's important is that we have the same work ethic. And so all three of us are kind of just um, balls to the wall um, all, the, all the time. So um, we... Uh, as so, a team, it's, it works. Yeah, as a team, when you know you're, you're, that you're good at this part and then you're like, okay, I'm, I know that I'm good at this field, then it just works like a team management. It works. It does. Team. Yeah, it really does. It's really kind of creepy how, how well it works out. We just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, but it works and that's, it's really cool. And I think that that's what, what uh, makes us so success, so successful is that we just have those three different skill sets. And then, um, and as, as you know, it's, it's in this industry, especially if you work for just yourself or if you work um, with, with a husband or a spouse, yeah. it's lonely. I mean, you know, you don't, uh, I, I quit the corporate world um, almost eight years ago and I missed my coworkers. I, you know, when you work for yourself, you don't have um, anyone to talk to besides your, you know, kid or spouse or, or cat or dog. And so just to be able to have, that kind of team mentality again has been has been really good i think um personally like just creatively just to be able to bounce ideas sure. and business um business questions off each other it's just good to have that extra you know thing that's that's great i can i can imagine being i mean even i have a good team and then once you don't meet and discuss photography or like weddings oh what we're we gonna do in this on this part and that yeah. part of this part Sometimes you do you do feel about it. I mean, definitely. Speaking of work, uh, I would like to ask you that, uh, like, how are you keeping up with this lockdown? Are you still working from home? Yeah, it's been. Um, well, it was kind of sad because we we uh, we were Madison and where I'm at in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin had a pretty tight lockdown. It was um, stay at home orders, and we really did adhere to that. Um, even yeah. though Doug and Courtney, our families are so um, are so blended together. Um, yeah. We really did, you know, keep the keep the quarantine, and and we just worked from home, and you know, I stayed with my family, and yeah. Doug and Courtney stayed with theirs, and then um, we actually have a, a fourth person. Uh, Darcy is part of our um, our team. She's our our brand manager, and so she That's does great. so much of the stuff behind the scenes, and and so she was over there as well, and we just, um, you know, we had zoom meetings just like so many other people yeah you know are, are trying to work things out but we ha we have a uh, touch base um you know a couple of times a week but um the one thing that was really you know that came good from this lockdown is that we were able to actually get so many projects done behind the scenes just things that even though we, we weren't shooting 
we were yeah. um all that little stuff as a business owner we i mean we updated our website we um cleaned up all of our guides everything um we completely redid we had a um a whole website fiasco which oh my gosh that's like a whole nother podcast <laughs> um that's, that's good. Yeah. We had, um, that's the interesting part. We're going back and what's that? Yeah, go ahead, please. Oh, I said, um, we, um, one of the things is we've always been really good at blogging. Um, so we blog every single day, but one of the things that we weren't so good at was, um, uh, SEOing like each of the posts and just making sure that all of those posts had really good, you know, alt tags and just content and beefed up stuff like that. So we actually we, we've been going through for the past five years worth of content and um, just SEOing all of our posts. And so all of this little projects that yeah. we're taking advantage because yeah. we want to be on the other end of this pandemic um, stronger than what we were when we when we went in there. And there's so yeah. many things as a photographer and business owner that you can do, even though you're not shooting, even though yeah. you're not clicking the camera. Right. So that's the inspiration. I mean, everybody who's joining in the video, I would recommend like, okay, there's a lot of things going on, but please we can take the inspiration from an expert like Bobby from Twig Olive. The whole idea is that we all are going through a bad phase. We know that the situation is going to take time. And plus we have all, I mean, you have to accept this is how it is. We cannot change things. But you can definitely yeah. work on a lot of things like Bobby mentioned that she has been blogging and then she knows that she, that's where she's good at. And plus the team management, if you have anyone in your team that you would like to collaborate and just to see and appreciate yeah. others' work. And there's a chance for collaboration or there might mm -hmm. be lot of opportunities that people are looking to join so if you can take inspiration yeah. and just join please do that but moving on to the next one uh tell us about your early days how did you convince your first client to pay for your creativity that's before uh you you have the twig and olive whoop hold on here it's kind of Whoops. Okay. It kind of, it cut out just a little bit. Um, can you just repeat that question? Oh yeah, sure. I said, tell us about your early days. How did you con convince your first client to pay for your creativity? That's before you joined, uh, before you have. Yeah. I think that, um, uh, it was, it was really important for me to do as many free sessions as I could. And so it kind of skyrocketed. It just kind of snowballed from there. I had, um, I, I just started with, a lot of free sessions for friends and then maybe friends of friends and then um you know just getting uh stuff like that and i i'll never forget the first time that i that i was deciding on what to charge for my for my for our services and i i put fifty dollars a session and that came with like a two-hour session all the digital files, which of course, because you when you first start, you always overshoot, and so okay. um, that was like 300 images for this like two-hour session for a family, <laughs> and uh, and that was what I did. I had that I had that pricing for a really long time, and it's one I know that um, a lot of people in the industry will say, oh, you shouldn't undercharge, you know, charge what you're worth, but. But when you're just starting out and you don't have that experience under your belt, there's, there, I don't think there's anything wrong with with charging less because yeah. that that's what how you're going to get better and that's how you're going to get, um, y you know, just get more sessions under your belt. So that that's kind of how I I worked for a really long time was I just, um, you know, and I think the first wedding that I charged was five hundred dollars all day coverage so I, I literally 16 hours <laughs> um, oh. of all day coverage um, was it was it a wedding was it a wedding or a family portrait or it was a, 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 a wedding so I, I remember I offered all day coverage um, for $500 and and it was sun up to like the end of the reception so it was literally like 16 17 hours <laughs> but it was when you first start out you just don't know any better or you just sure. maybe it's not the right phrase but just that you want to get more experience under your belt so right. um, so That's that was my thing for a long time That's then just true. as yeah as you get better and more clients you might you know then I up that to a hundred dollars a session and then okay well now I just want to get some different options with those family sessions and so just you know giving different options with that so that's how you Definitely. grow I and mean, you get to know what's going on and plus once you know that okay these things are working out then you should probably put it up the ladder like you usually go up the ladder yes 
Interesting. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So there's another one is uh, we all are artists here, but which other art form do you think you want to take up or try in addition to your current one? Oh my gosh. With this pandemic, I have been a crafting machine. I have been, um, I've taken up different crafts. So yeah. I, I do embroidery. That's I great. read books. I, um, I've been doing a lot of like um, loom um, weaving and just art projects. And yeah. I think it's, it's really interesting because I, I found that being able to take my photography and being a creative person on that side and to be able to put that creativity to another um, use and just sure. being able to just kind of explore some other things um, as a creative, that's kind of what I've been doing. And so I've just been picking up a lot of just different arts and crafts projects and stuff. And because let's, let's be honest, we all have a lot of time on our hands and yeah. we can't do business in photography 24 seven. So something else has to has to occupy the time and so yeah. I've, I've been buying a lot of things on etsy lately <laughs> that's, that's great there's a lot of things i mean i wish we could i wish we could have something like etsy in india i mean we are kind oh. of struggling yeah we're kind of struggling on that part a lot of creative people are trouble. struggling <laughs> yeah but but it's all right i mean it's it's like we'll go with the flow and see how we can assist those people but okay so before yep, we have all the questions from the people so we had around uh, 37 questions from the, the audience mm -hmm. and then we combine it with our own thing a little bit so before yeah. we start asking all the stuff i have a small rapid fire round for you oh uh, good okay so one word and then whatever comes on your mind you have to be really quick like within two okay seconds. oh i'm gonna i'm really good at this <laughs> awesome. perfect i'm glad so the first one is twig and olive oh um uh creative awesome photography creative. Um, business. Family. Love. Courtney and Doug. Um, best friends. Camera. Um, confusing sometimes. Children. <laughs> what was the second one? Children. Oh my, I uh, love children. Family. Um, it's important. Most important. Weddings. Uh, my favorite. The outgoing introvert. Oh, the the only way to shoot. Perfect. Thank you so much for the <laughs> amazing rapid fire round. Now we come back to the questions. And uh, guys, uh, whosoever is joining in, please, if you have any questions, please write to us. I think I saw one yeah. question. Oh my uh, gosh. So this COVID <laughs> problem to afford a work. Someone asking that, okay, uh, is this COVID problem to afford a work? What do you what do you have to say, Bobby? I mean, I know uh, the prices might affect because uh, I heard like I was talking to a few of my the price we used to quote, which might go down because we have started quoting a similar price and people are like, oh, people are desperate to work at lower price. The people who are who were not so good but still will work in the market, so there's a chance that people might shift because again, money will be affected in all the businesses and you'll try to save money. But there's one yeah. uh, person in the, on the comment section, he says, uh, is it, is it, would it be like possible that we have to stick with the price or do we have to think that, okay, we can negotiate and we can go down with the prices? Um, uh, it, 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 the question cut out a little, a little bit when you were asking it, okay. but I think I got the, the, the gist of it. We, we've sure. kind of went back and forth too with, with what do we do with our pricing right now during all of this. And one thing that, um, that, that we decided and what's been working for us is that we haven't made any changes with our packages. We've, we've okay. stayed our pricing. We've kept everything where it's at. But one of the things which I think that maybe a lot of readers would um, or listeners would, would get some benefit from this is that with the wedding industry specifically, we think that there's going to be a huge shift in what weddings are looking like for the next few years at least. Sure. Sure. And one of the things that we've been seeing, we've had, I think, about four, uh, 30 weddings completely reschedule to next year or 
um, ap actually cut um, their big wedding and decide to go with a micro wedding with to yeah. go with a with a smaller yeah. wedding. Yeah. And so that was something that Doug and Courtney and myself we had a conversation and we said, okay, we see this going. Like, how can we come on top of it as a business owner? And so one of the first things that we did once this pandemic hit is that we came out with um, a m micro wedding packages. And so it was just, it, it's a, we have four different options and they range in price, um, but they're specifically geared for small weddings, for sure. weddings that are like 10, 20 people or less. Yeah. Um, and it, it's been very well received. We've actually right. booked a handful of weddings, just, hey, I'm getting married next month at the courthouse. Um, you know, where before the pandemic, we would just maybe say, oh, okay, it's just hourly coverage. Here you go. Here's our pricing. But we've been getting more of these inquiries that are just like that. And so we wanted to come up with a couple of packages for them where they get, you know, a nice, um, a nice album or they get yeah. some nice prints and products. And so it took a couple of days to kind of roll out, but it was, we just call them our micro wedding options and they're a lot lower in cost than a full eight to 10 hour day wedding because it's a smaller wedding so um that's been very well received and i think that if there's any wedding photographers out there that are not thinking about that you should that should be the first thing that you do is just you know come up with see where the need is where what people are wanting and it's it's definitely those micro weddings and i think that if if people are doing that in Wisconsin, they've got to be doing that in other parts of the world too. So that's great. That's good. That's a really good, really good answer. Yeah. I mean, I'm impressed about knowing that how we can look up to things. Yeah. But that's great. So uh, coming to all the questions now. So uh, Bobby, how important it is for a family or a kids photographer or a wedding photographer to engage with the social media audience? Yeah, it's it's pretty important. Um, I I think um, I I always talk about um, having a good website is kind of the front door of your business. And so um, even even if you have a great studio and if you have a great um, Facebook presence, um, we have a really good social media. But we still our website is the front door of our business. We treat. Sure. Um, and a lot of people are kind of opposite with that. So they'll, they'll be really concerned about their Facebook or their Instagram likes or their Instagram followers, but you need to have a really good website yeah. and all of, so that's the front door of your business. And then you have all of these side door entrances to your business. And that's where we say, you know, Facebook is a side door entrance. Instagram is a side door entrance, you know, text messages, you get all of these referral sources and um, to um, one of the things it's um, it, we find for social media, it is really important for us because that's where people are finding us. Um, I'm uh, close to 40. So my generation was the Facebook generation. All of my friends prefer Facebook and the generation below ours, um, mid, mid 20s to, to late to late to late uh, mid to early 30s they prefer Instagram. Yeah. And so as that generation gets older, they're not going to switch to Facebook. They're going to continue with their social media platform of choice. And okay. so the people that are on Instagram right now, that they prefer that, those are the people who are getting married, who are having children, who are wanting those family sessions. And so for us, um, we really kind of put a lot of stock into Instagram because that's where our um that's where our, our clients are coming from is they're finding us on instagram so i think Makes it sense. is really important well, that's i mean i can definitely sense that and i have a fear that uh, once instagram is over everyone is on tiktok then <laughs> i know no 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 <laughs> I, uh, we haven't been there yet, and I'm like, nope, 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 uh, no. <laughs> Same here. It is so difficult. It's so <laughs> difficult. I was I was reading a lot of uh, articles and stuff that how uh, the videography part would just go down because people are just having mobile phone and stuff, and and I mean people. And and they're like they usually have like things running in uh, without having like a proper camera or like editing, but they have softwares and mobile phone and things going to be like super zoom. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. 
okay okay so okay the next question is on mobile photography so what do you think of mobile photography have you ever used a mobile photo in a wedding um for what well, what was the question i said uh, what do you think of mobile photography have you ever used a mobile photo in a wedding mobile photo like i mean taking pictures through a mobile Oh, like the the drone, the drone. No, no, it's oh, a mobile, it, like mobile phones, like real iPhone or. Oh, okay, okay, like for guests that were are taking that or. Just covering a wedding, just covering a wedding. Like, have you ever thought, like, given a thought that you might cover a wedding with your mobile phone? Ah, uh, no, I. You know, it's it's funny as the the our the iPhone has such a great camera. Yeah. And it is when I go on vacations with my family or if I'm taking pictures of of my family or kids that iPhone is so good at at taking pictures that's what I use for, for personal but I think that just um for for a type of event where it's a where it's a wedding or a newborn there's things that my DSLR can do that no apple phone can ever um replicate or recreate so i don't see doing doing that but i know that there's a lot of other photographers who have done stuff like that and i'm yeah. like oh my god that's pretty cool <laughs> they have so been least, in yeah it's 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 interesting i mean yeah but but yeah i mean even even i was considering i mean i was we be, we took a look we, me and anurag were discussing and we were taking a look on one of the few mobile photographers and yeah. uh, they have their own presets so what they do is so you can there's a there are a few small lenses which you can pay, put on the back side of the of the camera and then yes. you can actually try and use as like a 50 mm or or a wide a wide lens and then and i was like this is i'm sure it's going to be affected but we all have to be prepared that okay there might be a market just to have those kind of photography with yeah. low budget like you mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. And it's any time that there's there's a need or a market for something, I mean, jump right in with both feet. I mean, there is I mean, no yeah, you can't go wrong with it. I mean, there's no idea or business that's a stupid one. If there's someone willing to pay for it, then oh my gosh, absolutely you need to just do it. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we have a lot of questions. So, okay. So I think you mentioned uh, one of these uh, answers that you have three photographers in the team but do you have more people in your team and there's one guy asking that how can we be a part of your team Oh well we're we're not hiring right now I th I think that um one of the things that when when we decided when when we merged is is we wanted to we're, we're obviously high high volume because there's three of us that are shooting but we we want to be boutique in experience um i still want to be able to um you know know my clients by name and um we um every single thing that you see that's on our website or social media was either taken by myself or Doug and Courtney and um i we don't see any way how to that we're going to be changing that right now um just because we we want to have that um boutique experience for our clients and to be able to handle that and so um it's uh we we kind of dabbled with associate photographers when we first started and it was there was just too many problems and we're like no this isn't for us we just want to keep it with just um just us three and just to eliminate all of the all of the problems with that so i can understand because once you have a different style of working and then if someone has a different style of working they keep on coming in between or probably yeah. coming in the background and and yeah. every time you'll be like oh shit like this was my <laughs> shot and it was right there and there's another new person yeah. joining in and then you can you can yeah. see those stuff yeah yeah I could, they, I could. we already have enough issues with with working with well dog with two women yeah. and myself working with a husband and wife team and uh Courtney dealing with two very strong personalities with Doug and myself so we we have enough issues between the three of us that we don't need to add in any more people <laughs> <laughs> i say that with love <laughs> all right i'll just take that okay guys there's no opportunity right now but you can definitely no, check out there check out the website <laughs> for all the work and inspiration where you can have one-on-one -on -one live sessions we're going to discuss about their workshops in a bit but you can definitely check a lot of activities going on on their website okay uh, so vavi uh, have you covered a wedding in india um have not covered a wedding in india we we've done um a handful of of indian weddings Very in 
in the U.S. and and the um the, the Indian fusion weddings where they have just different stuff like that and there I wish that we can do more of them but I feel like there's just not um in Wisconsin there just isn't um there isn't the population where or we're, not the maybe the population's not the word but the the market isn't sure. um we're just not there's just not that many of them here sure. and I feel that um th there are certain photographers out there that are that are known for shooting Indian weddings and their, right. their work. And there's some people that I'm friends with out in California and uh, Los Angeles, and they just, they just ha have these type of weddings all the time. And I'm so jealous because all of the colors and the, they're so beautiful. And I just, oh my gosh, send me to India right now. If anyone's listening, send, I'll go to India right now. I'll cover the website. We'll, we'll get you to <laughs> India, Bobby. We'll get you to India for sure. We good, have a lot good. of assignments. <laughs> A lot of assignments, a lot of things. We're gonna do a lot of projects in the future, but we definitely get it. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So, uh, okay, there's another one. Do you do wedding videos? If yes, then can you tell your process? If like no one can tell us why. I mean, how do you do it? And what's the like? Do you focus on just the full videos, or you focus on small videos, documentaries, trailer, yeah. and teasers? That's a really easy question and a short answer. We don't do any videos. Um, I, I feel like it's, it, it is, people who do videography are, those are, that is a completely different art form. And I, I'm still working on perfecting my photography craft. And so to add in something else, oh my gosh, nope, nope, nope. Um, it's, uh, no, the, we, we have a really great, list of preferred um vendors that we sure. we send to all of our wedding clients and um the videographers out there are just they're amazing and and i just i couldn't replicate any of that and so we just like to refer people out to, out to the the true artists and the true professionals on that that's it'd be great. better than anything i could cobble together <laughs> that's great that's great yeah the, the indian market was kind of uh, similar like i would say okay. four years ago so a lot of people usually asked me that, okay, so even I started as a photographer and uh, so, but I was losing on jobs because I was not doing videography. So yeah. they thought, oh, yeah. you are into this and you don't have a videography. Sorry, you yeah. would like to just have one team where you yeah. have videos and pictures. And then if you want to be yeah. part of it, you want this project, then you have to get your team. So that was one part. Then you have to maintain, okay, the quality. They write yeah. like people on the top. So I have to game up with my skills and ideas and stuff. And then how I need to push myself to get into that business so that if I have to survive, if I have to do things, I have to do take videos and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, I love that you said that because it, it's something that, that we've talked about. It comes up every year, every, every, uh, several times a year, because like you said, people do inquire and they say, Oh, sure. we just want to one stop shop and we want to do this. And so, we've we've talked about it several times like maybe yeah. we should offer this and just at the end of the day we just right now that might change in the future but for us right now we have so many irons in the fire um with other projects and stuff um but maybe that'll change in the future but it's definitely if if you're a photographer who offers videography services um that's amazing because it's there's definitely people who that's exactly what they want so correct, correct, correct. it's the same that i usually do like 10 weddings or 12 weddings a year that's it yeah i mean i don't have to overburden myself with uh, the creative video or like stuff but that's the yeah. only niche but i keep on trying other forms of activity like other forms of sports sports when yeah. i say yeah. i covered madrid open mallorca open i have interest in like uh, these mm -hmm. superheroes rafa nadal roger federer <laughs> So I was like, I need to go one day and take pictures of them, which I did. And then uh, Wimbledon. And I always like had spent time with my dad. And I was like, yeah, one day there would be a time that I want to uh, just go out and meet them. But I didn't know it was through photography. So which helped yeah. me through photography. I can just travel and work and then I can meet them at the same, same time. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Okay. So we have a really cool question right now from Nick Hill. So it says, I'm planning to begin my career photography and pretty fond of nature photography. I want to know what are the softwares help me to enhance my photography? Um, what, um, what will enhance the photography? So it says, I'm planning to begin my career in photography and pretty fond of nature photography. I want to know what are the software help me to enhance my photograph? The filters? Yeah. The filters that with uh with nature photography um i feel like that um that is something that's so completely different than um what what we do is with uh portrait photography 
Um, there's a there's a photographer. He was um, that that uh, and I can if this person wants to message me afterwards. Um, he's a he's a real good friend of ours. Um, his name is Andy Stentz, and he was a photographer in Wisconsin, but he moved to Hawaii, and he does amazing work with nature and landscape and he he does things with filters and lenses that i don't even i didn't even know that they make out there <laughs> so um it's one of, yeah i think that with a with a question like that it, it's such a different type of of art art form i can't do it i just i see some of those things that landscape photographers do and yeah. i have no idea like i just know that they probably shoot at f22 and that's about it that's that's my knowledge with, with okay. that. What, what was the name again? Probably I can write in the comment section yeah. and can yep. go through it. Um, Andy, A-N-D-Y. Yeah. And then Stenz, S-T-E-N-Z. So it's S-T-E-N-C, right? Yep. Yep. Nature. Yes, and he's out of Hawaii, and he his, his work is amazing. He's a... He's a he was a Wisconsin boy, and then he moved to Hawaii. So, awesome. yeah, he's really, really cool. So we have him. So yeah, uh, Nikhil, if you're online, please look for this name and go ahead. And if you have any quotes and stuff, uh, Bobby can directly connect you with Andy. Yeah, so, yeah. Just ask me afterwards. I can get you to awesome. him. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Bobby, for for recommending. Okay, so. Uh, tell me, this is a very personal question. I have seen that when we cover a wedding. We are like, I mean, we're thinking of between 10 to 16 hours of work when we cover a wedding, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we see that uh, there are a lot of times that we have to stay updated and be happy, have a smile on our face and uh, oh. just be more energetic to show that, okay, we are right there. But have you ever felt that your creativity goes down like, if in between that you, you didn't have proper meal or you didn't have water regularly and uh, but people expect us to perform no matter what because they're paying us and they hired us what, mm -hmm. what do you think about that that's a really really great question um i, I really like that um one of the things that that we changed um with our wedding packages about five years ago is that um about 98 99 percent of our weddings we shoot within eight hours and um, we have some of those weddings are, you know, a little bit closer to eight and a half hours, nine hours. Some of them are, are seven hours. And it's um, when when people book us for weddings, we're very upfront in saying, if you like our work, if you like what you see, we need to have input in your timeline process. So we want to have a conversation with you before your invitations go out with what time your ceremony starts. Yeah. and what time your dinner is served yeah. and where sunset falls into that and so our, right. our wedding in november where sunset is at 4 10 at night are drastically different from weddings in july where yeah. it's nine o'clock at night and so um we're able to craft a timeline um from from start to finish within eight hours and it usually is um we start our coverage when um right when it's time to kind of get dressed and so sure. we get those detail shots those what the dress the shoes the jewelry and then um maybe the tail end of like makeup and you know getting eye makeup on and right. stuff like that and right. then the coverage goes throughout the day until um kind of after those first dances and so um we don't have to be there for five hours of dancing pictures at night yeah. everything looks the same after after you know 30 minutes of dancing and so um so we've kind of just been really open with our clients and saying you know what like this this is you you really need us for about eight hours and yeah. um and then in our contract um this is kind of controversial as well but we say that y you need to feed us <laughs> so um and we just say you know just uh usually our clients will just get us a, a table there's usually a vendor table at the sure. A wedding um or we can just if, if that's not what they want to do then we can just go and get food for a half hour but um yeah and as you get better at your craft and more confident as a as a business person yeah. when i first started i felt like i always had to be moving doing something 
shooting. And um, as I get older and realize that there's downtime during weddings, you know, like I don't have to be taking pictures of people shoveling food in their mouth or, you know, there, it just doesn't make sense to take those pictures. And so, you know, if there's 10 minutes during the day where I can, you know, I'll just sit and just collect myself and yeah. look at my reel, um, you know, we, I can do that for sure. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. I'm just thinking out uh, being a, being an Indian person covering a lot of Indian weddings and I've yeah. also covered a lot of weddings in the States and in Europe. But uh, I always feel that so that the, the the impact where you understand the the different culture and yes. uh, being an American, if I would cover an American wedding, he would definitely be like, oh, it's cool. Okay, no worries. Let's just get things going yep. and we understand. But in India, it's usually, there are a lot of friends, a oh, lot, yeah. of, uh, lot yeah. of favors that, oh, please, yeah. can you just can you just do it for another <laughs> hour? Or we are running late by almost like two hours, but do you mind if you can yeah. send someone to the team? <laughs> I said, no, no way. I mean, we have to wake up at six o'clock in the morning and report at yeah. 6.30. So we try to come early, 30 minutes just to feel. Yeah. But if you go home at three yeah. o'clock in the night and you expect us yeah. to perform and deliver the work you see on a on a page or anywhere on a portfolio, I'm yeah. sorry, I, I can't. And they're like, no, that's your job. That's your problem. You can go to yeah. sleep. You can send one of the team members and then you can yeah. figure things out. Yeah. And and it, it gets it gets really, really difficult. But again, uh, yeah. it, it's, it's just more like, I'm, I'm sure do you have different clients who understand, but in India, seventy yeah. percent of my clients, they're yeah. like having favors, friends, and stuff where you yeah. have to exceed the time limit. Yeah. And and I could see yeah. that how creativity you have to maintain the creativity and then food yeah. and then like everything. So yeah, so. well, and it's a, it's a cultural thing too because all of our, our Indian weddings that we do and our our Indian fusion weddings, they're always longer. They always sure. add on more more coverage, and so. Sure. I, I'm okay with that because um, you know what, if, if if we have a base package that, that's eight hours and if we yeah. have an Indian client who they have they have stuff going on for sixteen hours, they're paying for that sixteen hours. So yeah. it's it's easier for me to keep a smile on my face all day <laughs> when I when I'm getting paid, you know, getting paid appropriately for that if if that makes sense. No, no definitely. definitely. So, so that's a good that's a good conversation. Yeah. I like it. Good yeah. So, okay. So it's a very personal question. How did you guys meet? Like, uh, Courtney, Doug, and you? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a funny question. It's a, it's a funny story too. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of people who, who know this about us, but when, um, w we were photographers in the same city and I have the very, like, I, I'm the networking person. I like to talk to people and make friends and do connections. And I had reached out to Doug and Courtney and I, I had emailed them and just said, Hey, we have the similar style. Like let's go out and, and grab coffee, grab, grab something. Yeah. And um, they promptly ignored my email. Yeah. And <laughs> they, they just, they weren't really into the, the networking and, and stuff like that. And That's they have, nice. they have four kids and they have a lot of stuff going on. So um, they responded back to my email eventually about six months later and they just said, yeah, that sure. Let's meet for coffee. And I responded back with about 60 to 70 dates that worked and yeah. they promptly just never responded back to that email. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, whatever. And, um, and, and so it was so funny. And then, um, fast forward a couple of years later, I was at a workshop um, in uh, in Texas, so yeah. across the country, and um, we were kind of going around in a circle and um, saying who we were and what our business name was, and and I I came and the person that was sitting next to me was Doug, yeah. <laughs> so we ended up going to the same workshop across the country, yeah. and it was so funny that that's how we ended up meeting and. Yeah. I was I was very pregnant at the time. I think I was seven months pregnant, and his wife Courtney was also very pregnant at the time. And so it was just like we were just laughing, like, "Oh yeah, remember that email that that you sent?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, it must have gotten lost in the mail or whatever." And and so we just always laugh about that and, and joke about that. But since that Texas trip, um, we we came back from that and 
we just we kept in touch and that's where we got to um courtney and i had our we had our babies within a, a month and a half of each other and so um that was kind of where our friendship more started that's and great. um my husband got to meet them and we just you know we, we were still running two different businesses at once and so we had these new little babies and so we said okay let's just get together and we'll just edit our pictures or we'll do our our accounting or just just kind of work together because when you work for yourself it's just kind of lonely and and that's how we kind of started um that's that's how we met which is really that funny is such a cool story <laughs> such a cool story yeah, we always believe like the my mom usually say if there's one thing that has to happen will happen if you really it want does. something Yeah, so yeah. You go around, <laughs> takes time, goes around, takes time, but if you want it, it you definitely get it. <laughs> you just yep, just keep going. So <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> so, beautiful answer. So, okay, this how do you make sure that you understand your clients' expectations? When I oh, meet clients, they're super vague of what they want, but how do you how do you see that? Yeah, it's um so one of the things is um with our with our with our family session um that's why I think it's it's so important to have a, a great website and a good online presence because um we're only showing the stuff online that um that we want to shoot. And so um when you look at our family work it's it's interactive, it's it's fun, it's tickling, it's playing. You don't see any studio sessions with and there's nothing wrong with that type of work, but that's just not what we do. And so um from the gate we we'll, we're already setting up our expectations um that if if you want to be photographed by us, yeah. you're coming to us for our style how we shoot how that's what you want for your images and um but one of the things that that we started doing about 3 years ago is that we send a little questionnaire to our our family clients um about 3 days before their session and we just um we ask them a few questions it's not it's not a long survey by any means but it's just a hey what's your phone number where we can contact you the day of the session um who are the names of the people I'm going to be photographing yeah. and and then we have um just a little a question in there saying like is there anything special that you're looking to get out of the session and so that's where it it kind of it it gives our clients just that um that little piece of sure. okay like if there is something special like hey you know what even though our style is very interactive and fun um we take those pictures where everyone's looking at the camera and smiling yeah. that, that or that pose traditional one we take sure. those pictures at at every single session and so um it's just a great place for it, it always is nice to see what people put in there because sometimes they'll say like hey we're um i'm looking to replace these three pictures that are behind our couch and they're vertical and they're five by seven and so i'll know when i'm shooting that sure. this is what's important to my clients so i have to um you know to to do that That's and the great. same thing for weddings too you know like hey is there anything special that you want um with your weddings is there yeah. you know anything important that we wouldn't know about so right, right. yeah speaking of work uh, i have a picture so if you can let us know like i have a bunch of pictures actually i think this is one picture where i could feel like see everything i was yeah. so i was so happy that uh, you can see almost uh, there's one picture hiding i'm really sorry with me being in the frame <laughs> but but i would like to discuss and talk about the the color tone the detailing plus the yeah. expressions plus the the group i think it for me when i see it just it just feels complete to me yeah but uh, what what do you think about uh all these pictures like what what was on your mind and plus the color tone yeah. and stuff That was a um I I really liked that that session. One of the things that we wanted that we wanted to do um that that was um for a workshop that we that we had did and it was it was a different um it was actually a styled shoot that that we put on because we wanted to photograph something that was that was um what we wanted to photograph as far as colors and so right. one of the things is um as our editing style kind of evolved um 
we we really like just those those deep tones those, those jewel tones and those those different colors with that and when we set up this this session is we really wanted to just bring in all of those colors with those mustard yellows and those um you know those oranges and those reds and those burgundies and um we just wanted it a little bit just more more moody and so um if you'll notice like the the picture with the the, the amazing cheese board which we yeah. did get to eat after we after we took the pictures of it um we, we used really directional light um so if you'll notice even the pictures of the, of the little girl and stuff yeah. um we just wanted very directional light so like the room that i'm in right now it's it's really bright there's light coming from all over and the the image that you showed up we had just a huge large window and everything that we shot was just very directional and we really wanted to play up with those um those shadows and those and those highlights and just try something that was just a little bit different from what our normal um normal editing was yeah, that's just great. I mean, I, I personally feel it's like a complete picture where I could see if it's my picture, then I would be just happy because I could see each and everything so clearly. And plus the color tone, which brings the, the energy in me, I find the yep. positivity, like just right coming out, popping up. And uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's that's really cool. Okay, so yeah. I have another one. Uh, and we have around... Uh, and Ten more minutes before oh. YouTube, YouTube. Going by so fast, I never get. To I don't know why. <laughs> it just feels like a normal <laughs> conversation. It's so so cool, but the Instagram has this like one hour thing, and oh. it gets so so weird. But that's that's my another favorite one. Oh, the little pumpkin. <laughs> how yeah. difficult or how easy was it to to take pictures of kids, like especially this one? I, I think that it's it's really important that you just kind of let the child lead the session. And um, we never, if, if there's a, a picture, if there's something in my head that I, I want to shoot with working with a, a kid, I love shooting um, this this age of the, of the kiddos. They're, they're so fun at that, at that age. And um, if there's something in my head that I want to shoot and if it, it's not working out, if that kid just says, nope, I'm not doing that, um, I don't force it. I, I need to move on and I need to um, think of something else that I want to do. Um, but it's, it's so funny um, with, with shooting kids. It's just, um, they lead the session and you just have to be a kid. You have to, you have to get down at their level. You have to play with them. And I think that that's why it's so important that we shoot um, with our 35 millimeter almost all the time. And so when I'm working with kids, um, I'm really close to them. I'm within a few feet away from them. And um, yeah. I don't, I think that it would be really hard to get those reactions um, with them if I'm shooting with an 85 or if I'm shooting super far away. And so um, it's, uh, I know that uh, RuPaul said, uh, how do you, how do you cheer them up? Cheer them. It's, it's a lot of um, just kind of, um, like if the kid is super giggly and if, if they're interacting with me, then I'll play up to that. I'll maybe go in and I'll give them little tickles or I'll, yeah. I'll take a little, um, like a, a flower and I'll go and I'll, I'll tickle their nose a little bit and then I'll come back. And so I'll, I'll just kind of be more like that. But sometimes on the opposite, you'll get a child that's more, um, that's more shy and more quiet. And I'll, yeah. I'll play to that too you can't go in and start shoving flowers in a kid's face if they're really shy yeah and so um it's it's definitely just how how the kid is and how um you know just kind of going going with that so interesting rupal says that tell us some funny incident while clicking them so something funny that's happened yeah Oh gosh, there's, there's, but well, I was shooting a wedding with Doug once and um, he'll, he'll probably murder me for saying this, but we were, we were shooting a wedding and do you ever like, just look at someone and you just know, like, you totally split your pants. Like this just happened <laughs> and he was, he was, um, we were shooting a wedding and he was yeah. shooting the ceremony and I could just tell that like he ripped his pants. And so he got up and he just like 
<laughs> saucing over to the back of the ceremony and he's just like there's a situation back here and so we're um so I'm shooting everything else and I'm this is like a, a beautiful ceremony and it's nice yes. and I'm like crying trying not to laugh because like he just had his like butt away from yeah. everyone and he's like I I just put my pants there's there was a situation and he kept saying there's been a situation and so we had to call Courtney and Courtney brought him new pants but like I still like it like right in the middle of the ceremony he just like yes. <laughs> it was so freaking funny I literally like I was crying the entire time <laughs> yeah yeah I can I can sense that I mean if that happens with one of my teammates then definitely it's the I feel like it happens to guys like often for some reason but now he always um he always uh has an extra pair of pants now in the car like just in case like that situation ever happens again that's like the on the priority list that okay what are the things you have to prepare before going to shoot yeah. is camera lenses tripod monopod <laughs> extra pants. everything and then there's a pair of jeans or or a trouser extra pants for sure for sure <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so sweet we were talking about the funny funny incident that just really really <laughs> I remember that I remember. it was a great thing to just like you know end on for sure <laughs> okay. so so, <laughs> so okay so there's another cool question uh which other wedding photographer or a kids photographer do you look up on social media who do you follow Oh, I love it. There's so many amazing photographers out there. I um I I love Jonas uh Peterson. Um he's one of my favorite just wedding photographers out there. Um I just I, I'm really I mean for for kids um uh Stormy uh Solus is amazing. Um there's so many good um just kids and wedding photographers out there, but though she's probably my favorite um family photographer. and um uh but yeah for weddings i'd say uh jonas and jose vila um those are probably my my two favorite wedding photographers out there super super mm -hmm. so what all equipments do you use bobby what's up what all equipments do you use like what all camera lenses oh for yep um so we we use um all all three of us have this the same gear and so that's by design we um it's 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 hard enough to be consistent with your own work but trying to make three photographers um consistent with with our work um so we all have a uh, D810s um Nikon D810s and um uh and then uh, 35 mm all of our lenses are are Nikon and stuff So, or D850, sorry. <laughs> the D810s are our backup. So, yep, D850s and then um yep, 35 mm um uh 58 mm and then um but I I'd, I'd say our workhorses are 35 mm. We're, we're using that almost 95% of the time. So, so for weddings as well, you use 35 mm. Yep, yep, pretty much. Um yeah, with uh with weddings we'll use more uh just more different type of lenses just kind of depending. Um I use I use the tilt shift lens for all of my detail work. So anything that's that's super close, I use my tilt shift lens instead of a macro. Um but then yeah, the um 70 to 200 just for those long ceremony shots, but um pretty much um my go-to um for for a wedding is just the 35 mm, 58 mm and then the 85 mm is kind of what I can shoot my whole wedding in. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I'm just thinking out that okay with these lenses. I've, I've not used much of 35, but I'm more of a 50 50 mm lens like 1.4. Uh, yeah. 700 85 and uh, official lens and uh just to have a different perspective of the whole image especially yep. when the when the ceremony is going on with the Indian ceremony where you have to take yeah. around and when you have official lens you just probably put on the top and then you have the whole circle yeah. covered. So Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so yeah, cool. Okay, so so we read that you've been in business for a decade now. How challenging has the experience has been over the years? Um, I I think it's been um, it, it's it's always challenging to um, you know, to to run a business. You always have your your ups and your downs, and 
Um, I think I've been, um, I, I consider myself actually more of a business person than I do a, a photographer, um, just because it, it's one thing to take pictures, but it's a, it's another thing to, um, to, to be successful in the photography industry. I think that you really need to be a good business person. And, um, uh, it, it's, it's always a, a challenge with the, the marketing and um, the client experience and um, j just everything with that. And I think that it's, it, it hasn't, there hasn't been a lot of challenges per se, but it's been, um, how can I get, how can we get better? And one of the things that's been really helpful for us, and I think that a lot of people out there could benefit from this is that, um, there, there's three experiences that your client has and whether you shoot newborns or families or weddings, it's the before client experience. And that's, um, that, that's your, your marketing, your, how did your client find you? How did, what is your booking process? Like if somebody wants to give you money, is it easy? Um, before your session, is your client confused? Do they know what to wear? That's your before client experience. And then you have your, um, your, your during session experience. And so that's when you're shooting, if you're shooting that wedding or you're shooting that family session. And then you have that after client experience, that after shooting experience. So how do your clients get your images? Do they know what your turnaround time is? Um, where, where are those? So three client experiences before the session, during the session, after the session. And I think right away that most people know what they excel at. What's your best of those three experiences? And I think most photographers will say yeah. um, during the session, they're good at shooting. They're good at making people feel comfortable in front of the camera. And it's those other two experiences that they're kind of lacking. And so um, fr from day one for the past 10 years, it's always been um, what can I do to make all three of those experiences amazing for our, for our clients? And every year we're changing things. We're, we're always doing something that just is like, okay, what, how can we make this better for our clients? And so it's just a challenge to always have those three things be amazing because you can't run a, a great business with just having a great session experience you need to have that beginning and you need to have that end and so that's yeah. kind of how the past decade has been has just been perfecting those um those three experiences so cool that's so cool what what did you study in your undergrad or in <laughs> i was a i was a um this is kind of this is very funny i was a probation agent for high-risk sex offenders so um, my yeah my my undergrad was in criminal justice and so I actually have uh, I worked with them um, in probation and parole with high risk sex offenders for several years before um, go, uh, going over to wedding photography so it makes sense right you know <laughs> so, definitely connected <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and it's so funny. Courtney has a, um, a background. She's in nursing. So she, she was, uh, she was a nurse and then, um, Doug has a master's degree in genetics. And so he, he has a teaching background as well as a very science and math background. So, um, but I think that that's why it's, um, with, with our workshop and our educational programs that we do, I think that there's a lot of photographers out there who just start say like, okay, we just, we're going to start doing workshops. And, um, sure. with Doug's experience as being an educator, um, we, we really have a good like in-person workshop and our educational stuff is because he has that great background to know what works and what doesn't work. So interesting. That is so, so I wish, <laughs> wish that my mom and dad are watching this live session because <laughs> to convince them four years ago, it was so difficult to tell them that I want to be a photographer. Oh, but, God. <laughs> they've already, they've already uh, accepted me and like happily now. But when I started on, I had a crazy, like I took science in high school, then I, I took economics in my undergrad. And uh, then I was like shuffling around to just take pictures and stuff. And they just thought it's like a hobby. And he's just not gonna just leave. And then he's just gonna join uh, the, my dad's business. And then, uh, but yeah, I just had a drastic change before I moved yeah. to Europe and everything just turned oh upside down. So. Yeah. 
I, I, I think- still, I still think my parents. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, there's so much more to that, but thank you, Dad. <laughs> correct, correct. No, I'm, I'm glad and happy that uh, if they can just take a look on this live session, I would be very, very happy. <laughs> Good. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is a really cool one. So you say it's crucial as a photographer to be fresh and innovative. How do you maintain that? Um, I, I think for for me, it's um, I, I'm, I, I don't like. Uh, like, I don't like looking at other photographers works all the time. I, I don't like, you know, just going and like, oh, okay, because I think that that kind of gets me more depressed, because I'm like, oh, they're, they're so amazing. Like, I like, what can I do to, you know, be like this. And so one of the things that I like doing is I get my inspiration from other things um a lot of just different um even like magazines like fa- fashion magazines for just different like po- posing and stuff that especially for weddings just like oh i like that pose um but for for me too is i get inspired by beautiful texture and beautiful light and so um we always i um one of the things that when doug and i teach our workshops is that we say it's you need great light and great texture and then put people in it and that's kind of what our style is is <laughs> light texture and, and people and so um i just i i get inspired by um antique shops and just um things that make me happy and so yes. um that's kind of what where i get my inspiration from but as far as just um just uh just magazines like in in general and just uh going online and not looking at other photographers but just looking at other genres of photography i guess is what really helps me that's so cool i mean trust the way you're thinking and all i'm just i'm just like motivated myself plus interesting so how we can take inspiration from different things other than being a photographer or yeah. looking at yeah. other photography things and all I, I i second that i think it's it's really cool definitely we're going to discuss after the session ends we're going to discuss a lot about and probably we have a lot of uh, like courses and stuff where we are just trying to be creative enough to come up with like oh let's do this one where we can have this part and this part and stuff but your ideas and stuff definitely seems like we can we can fit in somewhere so let's discuss after after the session and uh, so i have really like one question before we end uh, it's, i want to pick up like really the best one just a second yeah it's it's about your online workshop like it's so cool that everything is so connected Have mm-hmm. you received an overwhelming response on your online workshops during the pandemic? And how do you plan to go back to the presential work workshops after this is over? Yeah, no, that's a that's a really great question. Um, we have one of the things with our with our online workshops is that um, we we launched them about three three years ago, and it was it it came from a a, a need and just you know going back to before. um taking a need and what you see people want and so it it was an overwhelming um poll in the industry is that people wanted to be able to learn at their own pace and to be able to um you know sit at home and not have to travel or go to to a workshop and so we we spent over a year um producing our online workshop series and it was um and then also to have um a very active facebook group um with a follow up so anyone who takes the online workshops will be able to go into um you know our facebook and we're active and we're um you know just have all these things in there and um this year we've we've had to re- reschedule or postpone um almost all of our in person workshops um just you know through through the summer here and um i think that there's always value to doing an in-person workshop because you you're able to have that connection yeah that one-on-one where you just don't get that in an online workshop there's not a way to re- recreate that and just even um just to be around other people and other participants it's just it you just get that it's just so different than anything that you can do online and um but uh, you know we safety is obviously our our number one priority and and we want to um if if we need to postpone our in person workshops the rest of the year and just postpone everything to next year then that's what we're going to do and we're just taking our advice from the the CDC and the 
you know, the, the WHO and just, um, you know, adhering to those social distancing guidelines. And if it's not safe to do an in-person workshop, then it's, it's something where it, it breaks my heart because I'm a people person. I like to, you know, see right. my see my people um but that's what we have to do and so just being able to um you know keep in touch and one of the things that i want to do personally is i um i and going back to inspiration i i'm i'm a people person and i find inspiration in just talking business with people and just connecting and so i want to actually reach out and just um maybe set up like uh some different zoom meetings with people and just have small groups of like six and just being able to touch base you know at the end of the day with a glass of wine or a glass of co or, you know a cup of coffee no matter where you are in the world and yes. just setting stuff like that up where people can just be connected um with that but i'm super excited to get back into our in-person workshops because those are those are always fun for us that's great. That's great. You're already looking forward to a lot of things and you know what you want. And that's, that's the same, like coming back to the same thing that you mentioned before, how you got in touch with uh, Courtney and Doug is <clears throat> if you believe in certain things, it's going to happen. And now what I feel when talking to you and you mentioning a few things, I certainly believe that you are thinking like what you want and trust you will definitely get there. And then you never know, we yeah. might be sitting and sipping uh, like a wine and, and just discussing about business in India, business in the US and uh, stuff. Yeah. This, always the way of looking forward at how we can take it uh, to the next level in terms of innovation, in terms of design, in terms of business, in terms of yep. a lot of things, but, but it's beautiful. But yeah, awesome. So uh, we have almost all the questions uh, covered, uh, probably, but we would like to know that, would you like to know anything about WPC or the outgoing introvert, or if you have any comments on the platform, uh, the World Photographers Club or the outgoing introvert? I just I love the whole I am so happy to be a part of this and just what you guys are doing is just amazing being able to just connect different people and individuals and different um, creatives all over the world it is such an amazing program that that you guys are doing and I just I look forward to it um, every time and just to be I mean just to be able to give back to the community like this is is so amazing and uh, thank you guys so much for doing that and for inviting us on and um i'll, I'll definitely follow up with um with all the questions afterwards too um on instagram if anyone um you know has any follow-up questions or anything like that so be brilliant Bobby. but thank you so much for all the time and for all the beautiful honest conversation we had and we would love to have you again uh, for another session. You never know, but we're already thinking on a lot of projects. We'll definitely contact you if you have. And uh, rest, you take care. Take Say hi to Doug, Courtney, your family, your husband, and kids. Absolutely. Safe. And uh, we definitely connect someday. Awesome. I'd love that. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.